Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. Cryptocurrencies are up, they're down, they're all over the place, but they're definitely here to stay. So what's an expat to do? Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies and how they're taxed for U.S. tax purposes. This is for everybody in the U.S. as well as those of us living overseas. The first thing to know is that for U.S. tax purposes, cryptocurrencies are not currencies, they're property. So, for federal tax purposes, they're treated as property, and the general tax principles applicable to property apply to transactions using virtual currencies. The IRS has much more detail on this in Publication 544, The Sale and Other Disposition of Assets. What does this mean in layman's terms, right? That's what we really want to get to here. So, when you sell a virtual currency, you must recognize any capital gain or capital loss on the sale. This will then be subject to the rules around capital gains and capital losses. This says that if you held the asset for less than one year, you would have a short-term gain or a short-term loss. If you held the asset for longer than one year, you would have a long-term gain or a long-term loss. Your first day of holding the asset begins on the day after you acquire the virtual currency and ends on the day that you sell it. This will be reported on Form 8949 and on Schedule D. The next thing you need to know is your basis in the asset. And your basis will be the price you spent to acquire the asset. This includes any kind of fees, commissions, gas charges, uh, or any other acquisition costs. And this is in US dollars. All this has to be converted back to US dollars for tax purposes. If you sell for more than your basis, you have a gain. And if you sell for less than your basis, you have a loss. Short-term gains are taxed at ordinary income tax rates. And long-term gains are taxed at 0%, 15%, or 20% depending on your taxable income and your filing status. Capital losses can be used to offset capital gains. And if you don't have any capital gains, they, are, they can be used to offset ordinary income up to $3,000 per year. And you can carry that forward as long as you need to until you use up all those losses. If somebody pays you for a good or a service with a virtual currency, that constitutes income. Uh, so if you're doing freelance work or something similar and you're being paid with a cryptocurrency, uh, first off, this will probably be considered self-employment income. And so you might have to deal with self-employment taxes. But second, you have to convert those payments to US dollars and report them as income on your tax return. The next thing I'll say, is that you need to keep careful records of your purchase, sales, and earnings of cryptos. This all needs to be converted to US dollars for tax purposes. When you sell crypto, you usually sell on a first in, first out, or FIFO basis. So the Bitcoin you bought in 2014 with the largest capital gain would be the Bitcoin that you sell first. This is the standard way that the IRS does this. But you can also choose to sell on a HIFO or high in first out or a LIFO last in first out basis. You just have to specify the specific units that are being sold and the time and date of the sale. The information required for this would be the following. First, the date and time each unit was acquired. Second, the basis and fair market value of each unit at the time it was acquired. Third, the date and time each unit was sold, exchanged, or otherwise disposed of. Fourth, the fair market value of each unit when sold, exchanged, or otherwise disposed of, and the amount of money or the value of property received for each property. If the above information is not available, then FIFO has to be used, okay? So if you have that information, this is why it's important to keep good records. If you have that information, you can manage your capital gains and losses better than if you don't have that information. If you earn crypto as wages or compensation as part of a business, then you could potentially exclude it using the foreign earned income exclusion. 
We have a whole separate video on the foreign earned income exclusion if you want more information on that, but that's the program you can use to exclude $112,000 of your foreign earned income uh, from your 2022 taxes, okay? Uh, any gain or loss would not be excluded since that would be a capital gain or a capital loss, not earned income. But if you're earning crypto as income, then you'd be able to exclude that as part of your earned income. If you donate cryptocurrency as a charitable contribution to an organized U.S. charity, the value of the contribution is the fair market value of the currency at the time of the donation. Now, that applies if the holding period of the currency is more than one year. If the holding period of the currency is less than one year, then the value of the donation is the lesser of the actual basis in the currency or the fair market value at the time of the contribution. So if you have excess crypto and you want to donate some to charity, uh, you can do this and it can make a lot of sense for you tax wise, especially if it's appreciated significantly. That's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any other questions or any other expat tax needs, please check out greenbacktaxservices.com.